Hello everyone, welcome to my other video. Today I'll be showing you how you can set up micro frontend architecture using module federation plugin provided by Webpack. So let's get into it. Before I start, let's first discuss about monolithic frontend architecture. In the screen you can see a monolithic architecture. In the monolithic architecture, the web browser communicates with the frontend monolith application which communicates with the backend API services that interact with the database. Here all the components are tightly coupled and interact directly with each other and any change to one part of the frontend monolith application can affect other parts of the application. And scaling this kind of application can be little challenging. Here in this diagram you can see uh, there is a front-end monolith application which is interacting with three services service A, service B and service C. So here the single front-end application is responsible to show or work with the data that are coming from these three services. Now in case of micro front-end architecture the web browser communicates with the micro front-end shell which is responsible for loading and managing the various micro front-end applications. Here in this diagram, notice that there are three front-end services with three colors. Each of them is interacting with a particular service of their needs. So here, a single owner is not responsible for any change in the front-end application, unlike monolithic front-end application. Rather, a particular micro front-end owner should be responsible for that. Now let's see what should be the steps if you are looking to build a micro front-end application. Here I have listed down some points. The first one is identify different parts of the front-end application that can be divided into smaller independent parts. So these steps involves breaking down your front-end application into smaller components that can function independently such as user, in, uh, user authentication, uh, search functionality and anything else. The second one is deciding on a common framework and language for developing micro frontend. I would recommend you to choose a common framework and programming language so that it ensures consistency and effective collaboration between teams working on different micro frontends. Also it enables code sharing and streamlined development. The third one is implement a shell application or orchestrator to load and manage micro frontends. If you don't have any uh, idea about uh, shell application, so it is something like uh, it acts as a container for micro frontends handling tasks like uh, routing, communication between components and rendering the appropriate interfaces based on uh, any user interactions. So I would recommend you to use or implement this if you are uh, making any micro frontend applications. The fourth one is deciding uh, a strategy to bundle and deploy micro frontends. So these steps says like uh, you, you need to determine how to package and deploy micro frontends whether as a separate deployable unit or as a combined bundle. Also, you need to consider the, the factors like application size, uh, deployment requirements and scalability. And the fifth and the final one is uh, implementing a testing strategy that ensures each micro frontend can be tested both in isolation and as a part of the larger application. So by having a comprehensive testing strategy, you can verify the functionality and integration of each micro frontend independently. So this is also a big benefit of having micro frontend application. So implementing all of this actually enable the adoption of micro frontend architecture, facilitating modular development, code reusability and improved scalability for your frontend application. Okay, now let's jump into the implementation in a live project. So here I will need two application that is one uh, shell application, shell frontend application and the other one is the micro frontend application. So I will create one directory using mkdir 
and the directory name will be shell application and i will create another directory that is uh, micro frontend one so here since i will create one react application for that reason i need to create or i need to initialize npm so i'm writing npm in it to initialize the npm and after that i'm just keep pressing enter to accept all of these suggestions like entry point uh, the package name and package version so here the package name is shell application same as the uh, folder name so uh, after that i will install some uh, third party libraries that is react and react dom so i will write npm i react space react dom and then i will install some uh, development time dependencies like Babel Core, Webpack Dev Server, or Webpack CLI Webpack. You can pause this video and uh, type it by your own. Okay, now after this installation, I will uh, go into VS Code and create one directory that is public. And inside this public directory, I will create one index.html file. So, this is the file where your React application will get rendered. So here I will create one div and I will uh, give the ID as root. So inside this root container, the React components will be rendered. So after that, I will create one source folder where I will keep all the React components and all the initial files. So here uh, I've created this SS directory. And here first I will create index.js and here first i will import react from the library react so i'm writing import react from react and then i will uh, import react dom so for that i'm writing react import react dom from uh, i'll import that from react dom client okay uh, now I will uh, create one variable that is the that is for root container. So I'm writing const root equals to uh, react dom dot create root, and here you need to uh, provide document dot get element by id, and you have to select that uh, div that you have just declared in uh, index dot html file. Okay now you have to render this root so for that just type root dot render and pass what you want to render so at first i will create uh, one app dot js file that is my first react component that i will render so i will render this app component so i'm importing the app component and i'm passing to the render so inside the root container my app component will be rendered okay now i will need one webpack.config.js file uh, where i will keep all the configuration of webpack and actually i have pasted all the configuration and you can take the configuration from my description section i will provide the link to the source code here you see that uh, i have used uh, module federation plugin uh, for this micro front end and all these settings I will uh, come to these settings later when I will work with other component other application actually uh, all you need to know that uh, here for the mode is development and I'm running at port 3000 and also I'm using the Babel loader so since i'm using this babel loader i need to create one babel rc file so i'll create that in babel rc file you can simply uh, configure all the babel presets so here i will uh, write some presets like uh, babel preset react and i will need some plugins also and here i will write babel plugin uh, that is uh, proposal class properties uh, that's all and uh, finally i need to add one script to run my react application 
here I am uh, adding one script uh, as start and I will run webpack and I will uh, pass the config flag and I will uh, give the path name of my webpack configuration file that is webpack config.js now it will take the configuration from webpack.config.js file and it will start running at port 3000 and coming back to this terminal i will write npm start uh, to start my node server uh, i can see one error i think i have made some mistakes okay actually it will be plugins uh, one C is added here. Okay, now I will check the terminal if it is running or not. Okay, I have to destroy it and okay, now it's running. See, uh, the server is running at port 3000. Now, if I go to the browser and hit localhost port 3000, I can see that my app component is getting rendered successfully so the thing is uh, in this uh, app component currently i am rendering this app text only the idea is i will render other component from micro front end application so for that uh, i will have to create that micro front end application so here i have already created the directory now i will enter into that directory uh, writing cd space micro frontend one and then again i will initialize npm so i'm writing npm in it and i will keep pressing enter to accept all of this session and it will uh, actually create one uh, package suggestion for me and here you can see uh, for this micro frontend one application one package suggestion has been created now i will simply copy all these uh, dependencies and dev dependencies into micro font and once package.json uh, so that uh, i don't need to write all of these dependencies by my own and here i will just write npm install to install all the dependencies okay now from the sale application i will also copy this webpack configuration and make some changes based on the micro front end one configuration so i'll create one file webpack.config.js and paste it here now see uh, for this uh, micro front end i will also use this module federation plugin to make use of micro front end so i will come back later to these configurations so for now what i will do i will simply uh, change the port of this uh, development server so that i can check uh, if this uh, react application is running or not for now i will create one public directory and there i will create one index.html file uh, same uh, same way that i have created for the shell application and then i will create one root container uh, and within that root container i will render all the react application or react components now in ssc directory i will need one uh, index.js file and other one is app.js file and for index.js file i will simply copy it from sale application index.js file uh, the whole code will be the same as the shell application for this index.js file so i will just keep that and for this app component i have to create that so the file is already there i have to uh, simply write rfc to use the snippet of vs code extension and here i will simply write micro frontend uh, one now i will create that babel rc and i will go to this shell application babel rc and copy it and paste it here okay now uh, all i need to do is i have to uh, add a script in package.json so i have copied this uh, script from 
shell application package.json and paste it here. Now I will start the server using npm start. Let's see if it is working. Now see at localhost port 3001, uh, I can I can see this micro one is painted. Okay now what i will do i will create one component in my micro front end application and i will use that component in shell application so in ssc directory i am creating one file that is button.js so this is nothing but a button component so here i am changing the div to button and here the button name will be uh, a variable uh, that will come through the props so I'm declaring the prop name as button name so whenever I will use the button I have to pass the prop now coming to this webpack config file for micro front end one application you can see that I have used module federation plugin so here the name is declared as host so I will change it to micro front end because this is one micro front end application and also I will uh, use this application to use some components from it. Now the file name will be remote entity.js, the same file name and for this remotes I don't need that because this is uh, not a shell application. For shell application I will need these remotes. Now I will need this exposes property uh, to expose my components that I want to expose to other micro front end applications or other uh, shell applications. So here I will expose the button component. So I'm writing that also I'm giving the path. So the button component is iris in SSC directory. So I have mentioned that. Now uh, coming to this shell application so webpack config file here in uh, module federation plugin I need to make some changes at first the name should be shell application because this is shell application and for file name it will be uh, same as remote entity.js no issue with that and for this remotes okay so here I have to give the name of my micro front end uh, application name so there I have uh, kept the name as micro front end and also that micro front end is running at localhost port 3001 I've just declared it so I'm giving the localhost port as 3001 okay now in this app.js file under this shell application I will use that button component that is coming from that micro front end application okay so the for that uh, I have to first import that button in this component so I'm writing const button equals to react dot lazy because I will lazy load this component and I will write import and then I have to uh, give the path to that component so here I am uh, I will fetch the component from the micro front end application I remember in module federation plugin I have given the name as micro front end so for that reason I am writing micro front end here and after micro front end the component name is there so in this case the component name is button now here I will make use of this button component and I'm just writing shell application under this div uh, now I will write button and I need to pass that property that I have defined in the micro front end application the property name is button name and whatever I will pass from this shell application as a property that will go to the micro front end uh, component and it will be uh, used there and see uh, here I have used this click here as button name now I will go to this uh, Mac uh, shell application terminal and uh, I will um, I think I have to close the server because I'm getting some errors so I'll close the server and run it again so I'll run npm start so the server is running 
uh, let me check what the browser says okay so in the browser also i'm getting some errors i think i need to restart the server of the micro front end because actually i made some changes in webpack config file so it has not loaded yet that configuration so i will restart the micro front end server and see uh, this is actually working so here uh, this button actually coming from the micro front end application and i'm using it inside this cell application so the flow is i am exposing a button component from micro front end one application and using remote entity.js i am getting access to that in my shell application where i will use that button component and in shell component uh, all you need to do is import and use that exposed uh, component independently so that's all for today i hope you found this video helpful please like and subscribe if you would like it thank you